Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of Afterthoughts After the Show. It's been a while since I've actually done a television recap in video version. I do them on my on my Facebook channel in written form. And so I decided since I'm going to give Power Book 2 a chance, I'll just bring to you to what I wrote on my Facebook, just a quick synopsis of what um, took place. And so you guys know that book two is the continuation of power. At the end of power, James St. Patrick, who was the central character, was killed. And it looks like this book two, which is also called Ghost, is sort of the transformation of the family business. He really wanted his son Tariq to be legit and not live the life that him and his wife Tasha lived. But it looks like Tariq is going to get pulled into the game because Tasha has been arrested for ghost murder when we know that it was actually Tariq that killed his father. And so I thought that I kind of enjoyed the show. I said I wasn't going to watch it, but I got suckered into watching it. And so I actually was enjoying it for the most part, you know, as a writer, you know, the writer in me, you know, is constantly nitpicking and going through things. And so my first thought was that some of these black mamas really ain't shit and that they raising their kids not to be shit, okay? <laughs> because Tasha Monet, who's played by Mary J. Bly, is a new character on the show. And then the girl who was the stripper, and I can never remember her name. I want, I can't think of her name. I need to go back and check on that. I had looked for it earlier and couldn't find it. But in any event, um, they all need to go to jail and they need to be in the same jail cell. And there was a corrections officer. She was a big black woman, not big as in heavy set, but just big bone, tall black woman who basically told Tasha that she was full of it, that she was a liar and that she was going to jail for killing her husband if she didn't come up with a plan. And so there's a whole new cast of characters that we got to learn. As a matter of fact, there is too many characters and it's probably going to be hard to keep up with them unless they start killing them off like they did in the original power. And so it also means the more characters you have, the more storyline, the more nonsense that you're going to have to deal with. And so I was thinking, you know, that 50 Cent had found some new writers and then we got to the end of the show and I'm like, okay, here we go. Because when we got to the end of the show, Tasha thought she was going home, that she had cut a deal, but they came with the real, real, okay. And instead of state charges for murder, she, you know, was hit with some federal charges. And so when she was asked who actually killed Ghost, that fool stood up there and said that it was Tommy Egan. I was like, oh my God. Now Tommy then rolled off into the sunset, getting ready to start his business over on the West Coast. And now Tasha been to bring him back into the fold. And I actually think one of these spinoffs for the Power series is going to be focused on Tommy. So someone had commented on my Facebook post that maybe this is how they're going to do the lead in to the series that is going to be focused on Tommy. So James hasn't been buried yet. Now y'all remember in the original power when Raina was killed, it took forever for them to finally bury that poor child and look like we might be going through the same situation with James. And it's so crazy because they're trying to act like James was just murdered. But Tasha has already been arraigned. She has been offered two plea deals. She's on her third attorney. And now she's off to the federal penitentiary after being charged for RICO under the drug kingpin law. And I joked on my Facebook post that um, it was Joe Biden's um, drug kingpin law. Because you guys know that uh, Bill Clinton actually signed in the 
drug kingpin, you know, the drug kingpin law into effect back in the 90s, like the early to mid 90s. And so Joe Biden, I believe, was a congressman or something. And so he voted along, you know, party lines to support this bill to send all of these drug dealers to prison, you know, for life and for multiple life sentences. So moving right along, um, Tariq has also dropped out of high school, which we already knew, I think, from last season of Power. He has taken his GED because we got to fast forward this thing along because in the will, Ghost said that Tariq couldn't get his Tariq couldn't get his inheritance until he earned a college degree. So now Tariq is working overtime to get his college degree. And so Tasha has worked the deal with Simon and Simon kept his word saying that he would get Tariq into his college alma mater, which is called Stansfield. Never heard of it. And, it's, and if you aren't using people, you know, you're being used is really the theme of power in its full essence. And so Tariq is going to use, you know, everything that he's learned from Ghost and Tasha to get what he wants. And then the school, I think, is going to prey on Tariq to get what they want. And currently what Tariq wants is to take this course that's like a fast track to get his degree. And so he would graduate in three years instead of four years to get his degree. So then we get the introduction of Mary J. Bly's character. She is going to play a woman named Monet Tejada. And so they are like a crime family, a big time crime family. So it doesn't look like we're going to be dealing with the Italians in this series of power we're going to be dealing with. I don't know if Tejada is like a Mexican name. The guy that they showed who is the father, he looks like he's in prison, um, bald head, so he's probably some kind of Hispanic. Um, Tariq is paired with a basketball player, so this is how the college is going to use him, is that they have this top basketball player who I guess isn't that smart, and so they made him and Tariq roommates, and Tariq has to tutor him, AKA do all of his work so that he passes his courses, which is sort of in conflict because in order for Tariq to get into this class that he wants to get into, he has to read this book and do an oral presentation. And this class is supposed to be super, super, well, it's not even a class, it's a program within the college and is super tough to get through. And so now Tariq has the pressure of trying to get Tasha out of jail, having to tutor this basketball player and to keep up with his studies for this class, but he says that he is up for the challenge. Although he has shown up late to at least three very important meetings at the college and with college officials, and he didn't read the book when he did his first presentation, but he convinced the people to give him another chance to do another presentation by um, finishing up the book. And so the basketball player is, I'm not sure if he's blood related or street related to Mary J. Bly's character, Monet, but they have a party for him, you know, congratulatory party on him getting into college. He takes Tariq. Tariq gets a quick introduction into this family because he asks to go to the bathroom and he goes to the bathroom and there's a girl giving this guy, you know, some head. And Tariq later finds out that he's the son of Monet. The girl's boyfriend shows up to the party. There's some interaction going on. It's obvious that the guy is mad. He's humiliated and embarrassed because his girlfriend won't leave with him. So Monet tells her son that he has to deal with this guy or this guy is going to be a problem. And so she is so ruthless that she actually takes her son to where this guy lives or to meet up with this guy for the son to kill the guy, which he does. And then he comes and gets back in the car like she's waiting on him outside like he just went to pick up something he left at a friend's house and he had blood on his cheek and she takes a rag or something and wipes his face and basically tells him that he did a good job. 
So back to Tasha um, in Tariq's quest to get his mom free. Tariq tries to hire this new lawyer that he's seen that he thinks can get his mom off the case. And I'm thinking that this guy is going to be the version of Proctor for Tariq. So he's played by Method Man. You guys all know um, Meth. And so his name is David McLean. And so he tells Tariq that his retainer is $500,000. So Tariq partners with the stripper chick. And when I say the stripper chick, I'm talking about the lady. Remember her son was attending Tasha's daycare. And then she helped Tasha raise this money by selling drugs out of the strip club. Well, Tariq went through some old paperwork, got her information. And so now he's hooked up with her. And she's going to sell these drugs for him at the strip club to help him get this money. And so remember the girl, Effie, who was Therese's girlfriend in Connecticut. And I keep saying that the college is called Choke, but that might not be it. If you know what the name of that college is, leave it in the comments if I'm getting it wrong. So Effie is now at Yale University. Well, it wasn't Choke College. It was a um, preparatory school. And so now she's at Yale and he goes and he finds her because remember the white guy who was Tariq's roommate at Choke? Well, now he's also a student at Stanfield. Okay, so we're you know, bringing it all together here. And so he tells him how to find Effie. He goes and finds Effie. She gives him the drugs and she kind of looks at him like you know she wants to rekindle their relationship but Tariq wasn't really giving her the time of day and so the lady sells the money they only raise fifty thousand dollars and Tariq knows that it's not enough so what he does is he gets Zeke who is the basketball player to let him use his Instagram account and so he does a video basically saying that he's thankful for the McLean guy taking on the case for his mom. He thinks that, you know, his mom's gonna get out of jail and he's just really grateful. So of course that went viral and the McLean guy was like, okay, I'm gonna go and try and help your mama. But then when they, and he said, but you gotta pay me. So Tariq gives him the $50,000. That's when they go to court and he's the third lawyer. She went through Tamika, who was the attorney, the, um, United States attorney and she got fired or left or whatever with the whole Angela situation. So she was the first attorney and she was able to work these deals with Tasha that kept falling through. Then Tasha fired her. and ended up with a public defender and then the public defender was like girl you need to take a deal because i can't help you with this situation and so now the david mclean guy comes along and he's going to finish off the last deal that the state was giving tasha but then the tables turn everything goes to crap and tasha finds out that she is being charged under the rico act as a drug queen pen in her case and so the david mclean guys mclean guy is basically telling Tariq, like man i can't take on this case and so Tariq tells him you know just think about what it's going to do for your career how it's going to boost your image and how you're going to you know be able to benefit and profit from this and so you know he boosts his ego and so he told Tariq, okay i'll take the job but Homeblood, you owe me $450,000. So now Tariq has to figure out how to raise this money, which is going to throw him further into the drug game. And so I thought the funniest part about uh, this episode of Power is that we finally get to hear Yasmin speak. So I guess they got a little more money in the budget and she can actually have a script and some speaking parts. And Yasmin also looked like she didn't aged about three years. And y'all know how power really only took place. The entire original power only took place over like six months period time, time period. Well, it, even though Ghost has only been dead about a week or two or three, looked like Yasmin done grew three years. So we move over to Cooper Sykes. 
Now y'all tell me how Cooper Sykes just messed up the whole Angela case, got fired, and now he's back and he is the United States attorney, not an assistant United States attorney, but the actual United States attorney over the Eastern District of New York. Okay, make it make sense. But we get a scene with Sykes where he's with his family and we get to meet his parents and his siblings and they keep calling him Nancy and I'm going to be completely transparent here and say that I fell asleep. I dozed off. So I don't know if if Sykes is supposed to be transgender or if he was just real prissy as a child and they called him Nancy. I don't know what's going on. Leave it in the comments and let me know what the whole Nancy thing was all about. And then we move on to Tariq's love interest. Okay, so there is like several women that seems to be vying for Tariq's attention. One is a girl named Lauren. And so he meets Lauren the first day of college and she, you know, shows him how to get to a building that he's looking for. And she's the one that also tells him about the program that she's in and how they need more minorities into this program. And then there's Diana, who is Monet's daughter, and Monet is Mary J. Bly's character. Next, we have Effie, but I don't think Effie is really going to have a prominent role in this season. Um, I think that that may come along later on, depending on how things go. And then I'm going to throw in the black chick named Paula, who is like a counselor and assigned to help. Tariq transitioned into college because of you know his mom being in jail and his father being murdered by the mom and everything that's going on and even though she's older than Tariq it looked like there might be a little some something that goes on that she might fall for Tariq and so looking back at the original power I'm looking at Lauren as turning out to be Angela I'm looking at Diana turning out to be Tasha and then Effie, I think, is just going to go away. And then the Paula chick, um, not sure what her role will eventually turn out to be. Like, what's the juxtaposition of people that were in Ghost Life that now are going to come into Tariq's life? And so, you know, Tariq seems to be able to work his magic on everyone he comes in contact with, just like his father and will cause many many problems at Stansfield and their diversity team because they seem to be like supposed to be an Ivy League school and they're trying to you know integrate their black students and make their black students feel a part of everything that's going on and so Tariq is probably going to bring the whole college down. There's another central character that's new to the show. His name is Jabari Reynolds and he works for the college. And it seems like he may have come from maybe a questionable, questionable past. And he will play a prominent role in Tariq's life. Don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. And then with the whole charges against Tasha, once again, the DNC is playing a role in that they are the ones that's pushing for Sykes to file these charges against her. And then we know that Sykes was at the scene when the whole shooting took place. And that's actually who I thought Tasha was going to tell the courts was the person that actually killed James. But for some reason, she decided to throw Tommy under the bus and say that it was him. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out and why the DNC, I'm not sure if Lorenz Tate is coming back and if he's going to be a part of this or not. It's just something with the DNC and why they're still involved and in pursuing these charges against Tasha that will also play a pivotal role in this season. And so that's it for me. Um, what do you guys think? Do you like this new version of Power? Are you going to be in, all in watching? Um, let me know what you think about Tariq, about the whole thing with Tasha being accused with the Rico. And do you think that the writing is better? Just from this first initial episode, it seems to me that the writing has gotten better. 
So that's it for me. Leave your comments below, rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye bye.